Now, gasification is not a new process. It, it was used back uh, prior to World War II, and during World War II in Europe, there was several hundred thousand cars and vehicles converted to uh, uh, wood power. I'd like to think we've added a few uh, extra uh, twinks to it and improved it uh, uh, quite a bit. I've been involved with wood, wood gas about six years now and I estimate I've, I've driven on wood gas enough to go around the world six times. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy it. Okay, this is, uh, this is wood. This is fuel for the truck. It takes one pound of wood to get the truck 1.3 miles. So that's 5,200 miles per cord. Now on my farm here, I've got all this waste wood that I can uh, handle. I've got plenty of wood to, to try to do away with. But if I was having to buy wood here, the current market rate for wood here is $40 a cord. That cord wood will take the truck five, over 5,000 miles. So if I was having to buy wood, I could still travel for less than a penny a uh, penny a mile. Gasification. It's a process where we take uh, biomass, wood or biomass, and burn it in an oxygen restricted environment. When you burn it in an oxygen, oxygen starved environment, the byproduct will be water vapor and carbon dioxide. If you can heat that up, those products up to somewhere between two and three thousand degrees, you'll get a thermal chemical conversion that'll change it into hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane. In tests we've done, the analysis of the gas, we usually have about 20% hydrogen, 20% CO, about 5% methane, and the remainder of it being uh, nitrogen, an inert uh, gas. Now you'll have about uh, Loss of power would be somewhere between 25 and 30 percent. You won't have the power you've got on gasoline, but as far as efficiency, we've done tests where it's uh, 37 percent more efficient running the wood versus uh, gasoline. My uh, Dakota trucks on a million BTUs of gasoline will carry them 168 miles. A million BTUs of wood will carry them 231 miles. We've shown that it's 37% uh, more efficient than, uh, than gasoline. Uh, this is the route that it uh, takes. Our, our wood goes in the, uh, there, or any of the biomass. It goes through the system. This is just a hopper that uh, holds the fuel. It goes on down through the bowels of the system. And actually for the process to work, like I said, it's got to get uh, extreme hot temperature. The design of it with the uh, insulation and heat exchangers and so forth, it has never burnt the paint off this. You can't hold your hand on it long, but you can touch it. And regularly basis, I haul hay in here with this. <clears throat> the gases go through the bowels of the system, pass back through here, and the velocity slows down enough. This is kind of, a, I guess you'd call it a drop box. If there's any particles left in it, they'll drop down here and I can open that periodically and let them out. There's also a heat exchanger in here. We've got fresh air feeding the system that is heated up from the gas going out. It comes out of this uh, cyclone filter into these rails around the truck. Once the temperature gets down to about the dew point, it starts releasing moisture. There's a lot of uh, moisture still in the wood. It starts releasing the moisture and it starts, uh, goes through the pipes down underneath the truck and there's a tank underneath the truck that uh, have to drain every so often to get the moisture out. It comes out of the tank up into this, which is a hay filter. I've got hay in here I use for uh, the medium comes out of here and back up to the motor to run the engine. I'll show you the route of the gas. These white uh, plastic pipe 
it's got the wood gas coming in from the back of the truck and it's channeled over in the, a breather box right here and to make the proper burn we've got to have the correct uh, fuel and air ratio mixture so I've got little valves and inside the truck I've got a, a fuel air ratio mixture in there that'll give me rich or lean uh, readings and I can adjust through a choke cable to get the proper uh, fuel air ratio mixture that makes it burn clean and lean. I also have uh, temperature gauges and vacuum gauges on the apparatus, the gas fire back here and they're all set where I can view those from the mirror. Okay, for some reason if you wanted to, uh, needed to switch to gasoline, it's no, uh, no big deal. Just uh, turn a knob and push a lever or two and we're on 100% uh, gasoline now. Going back to, going back to wood. Push a button or two. That's 100% wood. This particular truck has got a, a 8 liter, 300 plus horsepower on gasoline. So I can run it off of wood with a 25 or 30% uh, decrease in power and I've still got uh, plenty of power to do anything I, I need to do with. We've had the tailpipe emissions analyzed on the vehicle and according to the analysis on that it would pass all California standards at that uh, at that time. Uh, used, years ago I noticed where I dumped this out on the farm the grass would always grow a little bit greener around it so then we got to dumping it in the garden. The way I look at it all the minerals and nutrients are still left in that biochar so when I'm out driving as long as I get back home and dump the biochar on my place the only thing I'm removing from my farm is solar energy. The nutrients are still left on the farm. Okay, as, as I understand it, the gasification process is uh, carbon neutral. And the way that's been explained to me, when a, a tree or vegetation is growing, it's absorbing the carbon out of the air. And when that vegetation, tree or vegetation, whatever dies, it releases the carbon back in the air. So, in short, this cycle continues whether I use the tree or not. When it dies and rots, it's going to release the carbon back in the air. Whenever I use the tree to run my pickup, it also releases it back in the air. So it's going to recycle regardless of what I do. Now the fossil fuels, on the other hand, they've already been sequestered and they're not going to release carbon in the air until they're used. Yeah, I think the, the, the world, the United States and the whole world is de so dependent on petroleum that if it's shut down, it, it shuts down everything. All, all infrastructure is based on petroleum and when it goes, it will go to our knees. It's got, got to be some kind of alternative for us to fall back on and that's the reason I'm so uh, deep in the wood gas, you might, might say, being uh, trying to be dependent of that.